What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a free extension that could be a game changer when it comes to managing your asset libraries inside of SketchUp, both model and material. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, there is like a game-changing new feature inside of this model. Stick around to the end because that's going to be the last thing that I talk about, but you're going to want to know about that one, especially if you work with a bunch of custom materials in SketchUp. But first off, let's talk a little bit about what this extension is. All right, so you might remember that we talked a little bit about the 5D plus auto tag and 5D plus auto measure from um, 5D plus. So you can download that from this website. I'll link to it in the notes down below. Um, he's kind of a newer developer on the scene, or at least uh, one that's been popping up a lot more, but he just released this new extension in the last month or so called 5D Plus Library. I don't know why the icon is not loading on this page, doesn't really matter, but you can find this 5D Plus Library by going to this page, clicking on 5D Plus Library, and then entering your email address. So um, you can also support him by putting a donation in here as well if you decide to do that. So if you do want to support a newer developer that's uh, starting to provide some pretty cool stuff for the SketchUp community, you can do that right here. But when you do this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna take you to a page where you can download the file and install it. And you can just install it through the extension manager, right? So just go to install extension down and uh, install that RBZ file. Now, a couple things about this. So when you install this, it's going to give you a little menu that looks like this. If you can't see the little menu, just right click and click on 5D plus library. But when you click on it, it's gonna pop up a window that looks something like this. So first thing, you can access documentation by clicking the little gear right here and going to user manual. It's actually really nice to have a developer that's giving us a user manual that's in kind of a easy place to find. So you can go in here and you can find a little bit more description. Um, honestly, I would say at this point, there's probably maybe even a little bit better information on his YouTube channel. So I'll link to that in the notes down below as well. But so he actually has a full on playlist. So if you click on playlists right here, you can go to 5D plus library. And so that's gonna have a bunch of videos in here teaching you how to do different things, walking you through it. One other cool thing about this developer is he's also active on the SketchUp forums. So um, if you go in here, you can actually see that he's had a discussion about 5D plus library and the features. And as people talk to him about features, he's actually been adding a bunch of the features that people have been asking for um, through these discussions. So if there is something you'd like to see or if you have questions, he's actually responding on the forum, which is super cool. Um, I love it when developers do this, not only because it's helpful to us, but also because they can get some really good ideas from um, users themselves, which can make tools really effective. But let's go ahead and jump into SketchUp and talk a little bit about what this can do. So um, first off, when you first pop this up, uh, you're gonna have two options. So we're gonna click on this button right here. You'll have two options in here. There's a model and a material. We will talk about material in a second. There's a super cool feature that I wanna make sure that we highlight. But first off, let's talk about models. So the way this is gonna work is you've got model, right here and you've got two options. You've got local and online. The online's actually pretty cool. We'll talk about that in a second. But local is going to allow you to manage your folders of your SketchUp models right here like this. And notice how you've got options in here for active models, favorites, and recent. But then down below, you've got the ability to add different folders. So for example, so if I click on the plus button, first off, I have folders for different kinds of models, but if you just click on select folder like this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna add this to the list. If you click on it, you can see all of the folders inside of a folder just like this. Um, and you may or may not see the numbers depending on if you have the show details checked. Um, I would say if you're not managing these, then I would probably keep the details off, but that's kind of up to you. And so let's say for example that I wanted to access my cabinets folder right here. Well, I could click in here and I could see the cabinets that are in this folder. And I clearly need to do a better job of adding my model files to this folder, but you can see how um, this basically gives me access to any model inside of a folder that I have in here, right? So if I click on this, I can see all of the different models um, that are contained inside of those folders. Now, to add those to your model, you can just click in here and you can see how we've got some chairs, but you can click on a model right here, move your mouse and click inside of your model right here in order to place these. And you can click on different models in order to add different things just like this. So it's super easy to use. See how I can use this to bring these doors in, um, whatever, right? 
So you can go into these folders individually. You can also, because I picked my overall SketchUp files folder, I could also add these by clicking the little plus button right here. Notice how that's actually adding them to my list of models over here on the right hand side. So now, I can get to any of those from anywhere instead of having to like dig through um, these folders over here. So I can click in this and notice how it's gonna show me the different models that are in each one of these folders like this. Now you can rename these. So like for example, I might call this overall models folder or something like that, right? So I can click in here um, and I can rename these if I decide that I want to do that, um, but I can access all of these super easily. Now, one of the things I want you to be aware of is when you're bringing things in, right? So if I'm bringing a chair in, for an exa for example, um, let's say we wanted to bring a chair in over here and I don't like the orientation. Notice how you have the option to press the up and down key in order to rotate that object 45 degrees as you're placing it in your model. So you can adjust placement using those arrow keys, just like this which is also very helpful. Now, one of the cool things about this tool, and I'm gonna bring in maybe this model as well. So one of the cool things about this tool is it also gives you the ability to replace objects. So for example, say that I didn't want this chair to be this chair anymore, I can select it in my model. I can right click and I can click on replace selected, and that's gonna swap out the model for something else, right? So notice how as I do this, um, it's swapping out different models in place that one right here. Now, one thing to be aware of is there is, oh, well, first off, you can replace multiple objects. So for example, I can replace whatever I have selected in the model, and it doesn't even have to be the chair models, right? It can be whatever, but I can do a replace selected and it's gonna swap those out inside of your model, just like this. Now, one thing to be aware of, and you probably wouldn't use this for furniture, by the way, but you might use it for like, um, like, symbols like landscape symbols or something like that. There is an option in here for replace and match. And so when we do a replace and match, what that's gonna do, and you can kind of see that right here, and I'm going to click back in here and do a control Z. What that's gonna do is that's going to match the size of this model to this model by scaling its bounding box to match this object's bounding box. So like for right here, for example, if I do a replace and match, this is going to be very narrow. But if I take this one and do a replace and match, it's going to scale it out in order to match the size of that other object. Now you wouldn't always use this, right? That's not like super ideal for um, 3D objects, but for two dimensional objects, that could actually be super valuable. Okay, so you can also use this to add models to your library directly inside of the tool. So for example, um, what you can do is you can right click and you can add a subfolder in this space, which I've already done right here, but I'm just going to right click on this and rename this. And I'm going to call this cabinet hardware. But if I go inside that cabinet hardware folder and I select some objects like this, notice I can right click and click on add objects to folder. What that's gonna do is that's gonna place all of these objects inside of the folder just like this so that you can access them for later if you do wanna drop those in a little bit later. So it's really easy to take objects and add them to a folder. Like here's another example, I've got some cabinet doors. So if I was to create a cabinet doors folder, right, we're gonna go up one, right click, we're gonna add a cabinet doors. And so I've got some different styles of cabinet doors and these are from the upcoming cabinets collection. Um, this is from the upcoming cabinets module in my course, but say that I wanna take these and save them like this, I could just right click, I could click on add objects to folders. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna place these in here just like this. And then you could rename them, right? So we could call this whatever we want. So cabinet door and drawer, something like that. But you can right click, you can open the file in SketchUp if you wanna do that, but you can also bring that back in really easily. So now I'm starting to develop this library from a library that I already have. So you can use this in order to manage that model library, which is super cool. Now let's talk just for a second about the online 
section. Oh, and by the way, if you favorite models, so like say I really like this door, or say I really like this cabinet right here, say I really like this sofa, notice how you can favorite models and they're gonna show up in here. So if you have models you use really quickly, you can access those in here just like this. So now let's hop over into the online section just for a second, take a look at what's available in there. I'm going to not save these changes. Um, so right now, what this has, so we're gonna talk about this little plus button um, in the materials section. But what this has right now is if you go into the online section, you can access the model library for 3D SU Pro, which I don't know a ton about, um, but it's basically a free, at least currently, model library, and you can actually bring any of these in to your model. So like for example, if I click on this, I can click on download file, I could save it into my tables folder right here, and now I can access that from inside of my tables folder. And I was able to download this for free. So at least as of right now, and I have no idea if that's supposed to change in the future or not, but you can download these model libraries from s3dsupro.com for free using this tool as well, which is super cool. So now let's hop over into the materials section because there's actually some really cool stuff going on in there that I wanna talk about. So first off, you go to the materials section, right? It works the same way. So you add a folder. So you just click on plus right here. You pick a folder, you bring it in like this. Notice how you can change the way this looks by clicking on these little buttons right here. I'm gonna toggle these details off, but I have access to my different folders in here. I'll go ahead and we'll make a surface so we can add some materials. But if I click in here, notice I can see all of the materials that are um, in this folder. Now, there's a couple ways that you can add these. The first way that you can add these is you can just click on this right here. It's gonna pop up a little paint bucket tool that you can use in order to apply to a surface like this. Um, and it's also got this material editor. And so you can use this material editor to basically do a, lo a lot of the adjustments that you already can in SketchUp. So like for example, there's an option for colorize, because if you don't do the colorize, then your materials can get kind of weird. If you click on colorize right here, notice how it's going to actually colorize that material. It's gonna look a bunch better. But you can use this in order to colorize the materials. You can also reset the material by clicking the reset button right here. So nothing really special about this, I would say, other than it just kind of uh, integrates a little bit better with this extension. But another thing you can do is you can also select faces and click on a material and it's going to automatically apply the material that you select to those faces directly out of the library like this. So if you do wanna like swap materials out or something like that, you can do that using this tool. So um, another cool thing is say that you did want to take like this brick material or something and export it. So to use in like a rendering software or something like that. So you've got a SketchUp material, you can right click on it. You can click on export texture. And what that's gonna do is that's going to export the image of that to a JPEG. So it's gonna export that to wherever you put it. So if you need these maps for something, you can use this in order to do that very quickly. Okay, so this next thing is interesting. It's not the game changer. We are almost the game changer. But if you go to the online section right here, what this does is this allows you to save different websites. And uh, this is not as cool as I would like for it to be, but that's okay. But say that you liked, so I use 3dassets.one a lot because it links to multiple different websites, but I'm just gonna call it 3dassets.one. And I guess in this case, it would all be one word right here, but you can add a URL and you can basically save different locations in here. Now, the problem with this is all this really is is just a web browser. So you can go in here and you can click on materials and you can download them, right? So like, for example, this one will download as a zip file and I could download any or all of these maps. So for example, in this case, I would just want the JPEG of the brick material, but the problem is what it's gonna do is it's just going to download it to whatever folder you pick. So for example, if I save it to my brick folder right here, that's fine, but all you've really done is just used a nested website in here in order to download a file. Now you can drag these back and forth. You can save those model locations. You could actually do the same thing over here with like the 3D warehouse if you wanted to do that, but you know, nothing massively different about that. Okay, so where this gets awesome 
is this has the ability to take all of the materials or the images in a folder and convert them to SketchUp materials. So like these, for example, are wood materials that I have from an asset collection in Blender, but I've taken the image files and I've, con and, and I've placed them in this folder right here. Okay, so I'm in this real wood textures folder, which is where all of these live. But if I right click and just click on add material, it's gonna take all of the images that are in that folder and convert them all to SketchUp file or SketchUp material files. So this is gonna go through, it's gonna take a minute because it's got a bunch of files in here. You can see how it's spinning, but it is literally converting every single image that it found in that folder to a SketchUp material. So now all of those SketchUp materials are accessible and are able to be added in your model just like this. And you can see this just by looking at these, that these are all ready to go. So you can use this to really quickly take images and create SketchUp materials from them. That is a game changer to me because of the number of external texture files that I work with. I am super excited for this feature. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this extension. I, I'm very excited about that last feature because it saves me so much time and allows me to set up material libraries really quickly. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.